So I promise you the follow-up build and flip video of how to turn Derek, the $400 eBay 4K gaming PC, into cash money profit by getting him beautified on a budget and selling him on. So that's what we're going to do today. If you haven't seen part one and you want to check out the modifications, the build process and the performance numbers, that video will be up there in the cards for you. But in this video, I'm going to briefly go over the original parts from the first video and how much you should expect to pay. A really important don't be a dick disclaimer if you plan on doing this yourself. The additional parts and costs for making Derek pretty and more appealing for buyers, a nice and pretty build montage and additional modifications, and finally the sale and how much I sold Derek for and how much profit I made. But all in all it should be a really fun video and oh you guys haven't seen my new test bench. I've just built this for a few upcoming projects that will be really quite cool so if you're not subscribed get subscribed for that because I'll show off the build and the montage and it'll be really quite beautiful and the upcoming projects are going to be interesting very interesting so let me know in the comments uh, if you like the test bench what you've seen of it so far and let me know because the scene has changed it's very ambient in here at the moment so i'm going to need a bit of feedback if you guys like it compared to my other videos because it is quite a bit different but anyway today let's make some money So quickly going over the parts used in the first video, I built Derek up from a Dell Optiplex 9020 with some additional hardware making the final build, an i7-4770, a GTX 1070, 16 gigs of memory, and I recommended a new 240 gig SSD, though I used my old 500 gig Samsung SSD that I already had, and a one terabyte hard drive which came to a grand total of $392.40. A fantastic price for a gaming and productivity PC that can handle games like GTA 5 4K 60 FPS, with a fire strike score of 13,289. The build process for part one was a bit more involved than your typical build with needing to drill out the hard drive cage and work with additional Dell only plugs and sensors. But other than that, honestly not too dissimilar from your standard computer build. And if your goal is to build this for yourself, you're saving hundreds of dollars by putting in a little extra work. But before we get into the additional parts, the build and the sale, we need to cover the don't be a dick disclaimer. The following is the setup that I'm happy with for selling this computer onto somebody else. I believe it balances the best possible user experience and the lowest possible cost. You can definitely skip a few of the steps and not make certain purchases that I did to increase your profit at the expense of the buyer's experience. But if you are going to build a similar system with the intent to sell, what I do ask from you is that you think about the decisions that you make and reflect upon the question of what if somebody I care about bought this computer and had this experience. So with that said, I'll relate my decisions back to the don't be a dick disclaimer as and when those moments come up. So to make Derek more appealing for buyers, we need a couple aesthetics and feature upgrades, which actually presents some challenges. For aesthetics, we're going to need a nicer case. Our potential market is definitely going to be turned off by Dell's office look. And RGB. This might upset some of the RGB naysayers, but the fact is that RGB sells and it would be irrational for us to ignore that. So I managed to pick up the Cooler Master Masterbox Q300L case with an RGB strip and five fans for only $30. I highly recommend buying a used case as you can get a really great deal with some nice additional extras thrown in that can also be used for other builds if you don't use them in this one. And the additional parts that we need for features and improvements, an intake fan, fortunately this was included with our case costs and came with a Molex adapter so we don't need to adapt the stupid proprietary Dell fan header, a Wi-Fi adapter, it doesn't need to be the best but I do also want it to perform well for the buyer so I grabbed this one from Amazon for only $8.99 and it does 600 megabits per second whilst also being dual band, perfect for our needs. And a sound card, which is super cheap on eBay nowadays, and I got this for $14.50. Seems a bit odd, right? Why would I need a sound card? This is actually quite important, and I'll show you why in a bit. And these small front panel extensions for $7.99. Everything will of course be listed in the video description for you, but that brings our new total cost, including the original price that we bought Derek for, to $453.88. So at a minimum, we need to make that to make our money back. So some of you may be asking, why would they present challenges? They seem like pretty simple upgrades, right? Let me get everything out of Derek and I'll show you why.
So now that we have everything that we need outside of the case, we can start with the modifications. Heads up, showing you the challenges gets a bit technical and problem solving here, having to rewire Dell's ridiculous implementations for things. So if you want to skip over this part and head straight to the pretty build montage, the sale and the profit, I don't blame you. What I'll do is I'll throw a timestamp right here for you to skip ahead to. Otherwise, if you're following this as a real tutorial or just the type of person who loves DIY and problem solving, definitely stick with it. It's interesting. So the reason those seemingly simple upgrades are a challenge comes back to the fact that Dell uses non-standard connectors and doesn't want you to make their systems better. If you remove some of the sensors or alter how they work, the motherboard will even throw an error on post, which is a terrible experience for the buyer. You could just sell the computer with those errors popping up on every boot, but this comes back to the don't be a dick disclaimer, as selling a computer this way is a shitty thing to do if you can avoid it. And as we're smarter than Dell, we can get around their stupid countermeasures with ease. And that is what we will do. So let me show you what they are and how to do that. Firstly, the 9020 case has an intrusion or case open sensor, which detects whether the side panel is open. We we can actually turn this off in the BIOS in most instances, or as it's just a simple switch, we can connect the wires together and it will forever think the side panel is closed. First one done, plain and simple. The next one is a bit more complicated however. The power button is stupidly non-standard and uses a proprietary 5 pin connector, so we need to figure out what those wires do. We know that two of them will be positive and negative for the button's LED, another two will be for the power switch, and the fifth one I assume is the signal for changing the colour on the LED, as it does turn different colours depending on errors and other parameters. That last one is something that we can't actually map to a typical case front panel connector which means that the button's LED is something that we can't actually utilize without getting errors. So what we need to do is tap into the power switch by connecting the case's power button to the Dell's power button. If we do that, then whenever you hit the power button on the new case, the motherboard is none the wiser and thinks that you've pressed the original power button. Simple. So we need to figure out which cables are for the power switch first, and we can eliminate the cables connected to the LED pins. They would be LED power, which means that the ones that we need are two of the other three and one of them will be for changing the LED's colour. The short version of the story is that you can trace the remaining wires back to the motherboard connector and bridge the pins in question, as we know that they're all signal wires. When the computer turns on, you've found the two that you need, which turns out to be these two pins for the 9020, and this relates back to the black and yellow cables. So now all that we need to do is splice into them and attach the extensions and reconnect it all back together. Then we can just connect the extensions to the case's power switch connector. But why are we using an extension instead of just cutting the case's power switch and using that? Remember that don't be a disclaimer? I want the buyer to have the most upgradability in the future, which means that we are keeping that power switch intact for them. Lastly, two of the front USB ports and audio ports use another proprietary connector that throws an error when it's not plugged in. So we can just disassemble that unit by pulling the tabs on the housing, and then we can remove the USB 3 plugs and attach the connector to the motherboard when we assemble it. But how do we get the case's front panel audio working for the buyer, especially as the wiring is completely non-standard, even by cable count? making it extremely difficult to figure out what each wire is responsible for. You could replace the cases or aux connectors with the Dell ones and glue them in, but two reasons why we're not doing that. Number one, the Dell motherboard's audio does perform terribly, as it has so much electrical interference. Number two, gluing these connectors in place of the Cooler Master ones would just look a bit shit. Therefore, I'm not even going to bother telling you why we're not doing that this time. So this is where our sound card comes in. I made sure to buy one with a front panel connector to fix that issue. Little bit of cost, but an easy fix and the best outcome for the buyer is we have also drastically upgraded their audio solution for them. But now everything else should be plug and play. So let's get to building. There we go, up and running. So what do you guys think? Good looking for a Dell Optiplex, right? But now we've made Derek all pretty, we need to sell him. 
I'm actually going to use, offer up Let Go and Facebook Marketplace for this. But James, you said eBay was the best place to buy used components and you're absolutely right. But as a seller, eBay will hit you with both their fees and PayPal fees, which will definitely eat into your profit. If you are unable to get a buyer using a local buy and sell solution, eBay may still be your best bet as you have access to a lot more people, but I recommend at least starting with a local buy and sell option first. But what do we include when we list them? Well, through my experience of flipping a ton of computers online, it's best to stick to this format for listing. You've got to take some really nice, clear and artistic photos of the computer. You want to include some eye-catching buzzwords in the title. And for the main description, write a summary of the system. You have to hype a little bit, but do not lie. Bear in mind that you're not going to be targeting experience builders. Your target market should be people that want to get gaming now and don't necessarily know how to build. Section 2. A nice idea is to state what frame rates they should expect from what games and also include screenshots of this in the listing gallery after the pictures of the computer itself. If they don't know what the components mean, this is what the buyer will likely focus on. Section 3. You should be confident enough in your parts testing and computer building to offer a small warranty under the condition that the computer hasn't been tampered with. This offers a peace of mind factor for the buyer and it will make your computer look a lot more favorable against other listings. But if you offer it, make sure that you actually intend to honor it. And then section four, list out the specifications for absolutely everything. And then for the price, start slightly higher than what you want for it. Most people are going to want to bring you down, but don't stupidly overprice it. Compare other similar listings to get a feel for how much it's worth and also check what's been sold recently. Then just wait for a buyer. So we're just driving out of Stanford now and Derek is sold. Yes, we sold Derek and that's where we've been. My wife is in the car with me. She's just operating the camera. Uh, she came for backup in case things got a bit hairy. She could defend me and protect my honor. So we're just heading back now and for proof, uh, here is the money, but I'm not gonna tell you how much until we get back home and I'll meet you guys back there. So I'll see you in a bit. So there we go guys, I listed it for $690 and actually charged $10 for a drop off that was just under 10 miles away. I did expect them to bring me down a little bit and I would have taken a little less but they were super happy with the PC and after testing it, they didn't even try and haggle the price which is better for me I guess. But how much profit did I make? How much did a little bit of time and a little bit of effort make me? Well after I deduct Derek's cost plus the sales tax from buying Derek and all the parts because I didn't include that in the first video and I explained why in that video, but I ended up making $208.11. And we did this in a highly repeatable way. We did it without much luck using eBay, consistent access to the products, and you should be able to do this at home, follow the steps and make some money yourself. But I do really hope that you enjoyed this video, guys. It has been really fun making it for you. And I hope that you get subscribed if you're not already for more builds, reviews and DIY. If not, a thumbs up would be really appreciated too. But otherwise, leave a comment. I reply to them all and share this video out to a friend that might enjoy it. But otherwise, guys, I'll see you in the next one.